What's up guys, welcome back to The Mindful Spoon. I know I missed last week and I'm very sorry, but I was just about to clean out my fridge and get a couple of things together when I realized that I have some core meals or core foods that I eat when it comes to healing gastritis that I really wanted to share with you guys. I know usually I have done herbs in the past and I have done full meals, but these are specific foods that you can try to incorporate within your day or within your week, within your groceries, that can help with the inflammation in your body. As we know, gastritis is the inflammation of the stomach lining, and just overall gut issues can really cause a lot of inflammation. A lot of people like to adopt anti-inflammatory diets. However, I know for a lot of people, it's not realistic. You have work, you have school, you have things to do throughout the day, and it can be a little bit hard to put things together. So by introducing you to some of these specific foods that can help you lower your inflammation and help you in your healing journey, I'm hoping it'll be a little little bit easier for you when it comes to your weekly expenses and a little bit easier for you when it comes to your actual diet. So let's get started. Okay, so the first one I actually do have in my fridge. I threw a bunch of stuff out that was going bad, but I always have this unlocked. Whether it's dried and it's for teas or whether it's just fresh like this one, I love to use ginger. It's actually one of the reasons why I was able to recover so quickly from my cold that I had a couple of days ago. Ginger has been used for centuries when it comes to its anti-inflammatory and digestive properties. It can help you relieve nausea, stomach pain, and vomiting. And as we know, for a lot of people, these are all associated with gastritis or gut issues. Ginger is also said to not only be an antioxidant, but an anti-tumor and anti-ulcer. So for those people out there that are really struggling with ulcers, try scraping a little bit of ginger into your morning tea or into some hot water in the morning and sip it little by little throughout the day. Its active ingredient is called ginger oil, which is pretty much what makes it taste a little bit spicy, but has that kick in it. In my research about ginger, I came to realize that it has not only been used for actual issues with your stomach, but it has also been used religiously in Chinese medicine back to like 400 BC for colds and fevers, infectious diseases, a lot of muscular aches, arthritis, and sprains. One of the symptoms that a lot of people have when they have gastritis is arthritis, which is really interesting because it just goes to prove that inflammation in the gut can be inflammation in the whole body. Really quick story, when I was first diagnosed with gastritis, a couple days later, after I started taking my omeprazole, my Prilosec, I noticed my hands becoming very tense, and there was one time where I picked up a computer that I had to travel from one desk to the other, and in doing so, my hand literally locked it was specifically my right hand which is my less dominant hand but still there could be no way that I'm so used to always moving these computers moving this cargo that in doing so I literally hurt my hand and my hand was stuck for days I had to use a lot of different anti-inflammatory ointments and a lot of pain medications to get that out and one of those ointments actually was infused with ginger so again ginger can be used in ointments can be used in teas can be used grated onto foods can be used to cook and some of the recommendations out there are one to two grams of ginger per day so next is chamomile. I know we've talked about chamomile when it comes to gut health, bettering your gut health, easing the stomach. It's a very easing herb. Again, it can be taken as a tea or as some type of supplement. This is some of the information that I gathered when it came to chamomile teas. The tea infusion is used as a wash or gargle for inflammation of the mucous membranes of the mouth and throat. Inhalation of the vaporized essential oils derived from chamomile flowers is recommended to relieve anxiety and general depression. I know that there is a lot of people out there who are currently suffering or experiencing anxiety and depression along with stomach issues and a lot of times some of the root causes or the things that really contribute to those gut issues is the stress and just the overall mental health of that person. For me, I have really noticed that chamomile is a really good herb when it comes to stomach cramps. Even when I am on my menstrual period or when I simply had abdominal cramps when I had really, really bad gastritis. And I usually consumed about three grams of chamomile. Usually teas come in two and two and a half grams of chamomile. Next is aloe vera. Aloe vera is a holy grail when it comes to gastritis. It's one of the first things that I would start slowly incorporating into my diet. There's a ton of aloe vera juices out there in the market and you just have to make sure that the main ingredient is aloe vera next to the water content. I know a lot of people consume Lily of the Valley, I believe is what that brand called. It's aloe vera juice and I've drank that before. I usually do about two tablespoons in eight ounces of water or 16 ounces of water if you just want to consume more water. But if you're gonna take 
take anything from this video, take the aloe vera tip. Huge, huge anti-inflammatory and has so many cooling effects. Aloe vera is known to decrease inflammation. We are so used to the aloe vera gel that we put on when we get sunburned and we notice a big difference when it comes to removing that redness from the sunburn. Now imagine that being ingested. Now I'm not recommending for you to take aloe vera gel orally or like to consume it or anything like that but i do recommend either making your own aloe vera juice which i can link down below a recipe of someone else's video that i've done before or you can buy it in the store pre-made aloe vera is also great for ulcers next is turmeric i'm not sure if i've talked about turmeric before now i do usually like to recommend this but in very small amounts when it comes to gastritis because if you do consume a lot of spices and a lot of heavy spices it can really irritate the stomach lining, especially when you're first starting to heal. One of the first things that I started taking was aloe vera and I really found that to be really cooling and really refreshing for me. And I would say I didn't start incorporating turmeric until way down the line, until I was probably like 70% Healed. I felt a lot better. So yeah, the next video I can definitely show you guys sort of like a tonic that you can make every morning That you can drink and can really help you lower that inflammation that would be with some aloe vera maybe a tiny bit of ginger and Once it's really you know, you felt a little bit better with your symptoms Maybe a tiny bit of turmeric as well again It helps reduce inflammation and improve digestive function. I would only take about half a teaspoon if so of turmeric next is peppermint now I do not recommend peppermint if you have GERD. That is gastroesophageal reflux disease. This can make it a little bit worse because the peppermint can actually relax the sphincter in the stomach and cause some reflux for some people. Also, if you have hiatal hernia, a lot of times people with hiatal hernia struggle consuming peppermint because it brings back those symptoms. But it is said to be very relieving when it comes to bloating and stomach pain and we all know what that's about, especially if you have gastritis only. So be very careful with peppermint, but it is a very relieving herb when it comes to bloating. Next is licorice root. Now I mentioned licorice root in my gut health and my gut herbs video that I made. I'm gonna bring it back up, I'm sorry. I'm bringing a lot of very common ones, but I'm bringing it with a little bit of twist and information and ways that you can use it now licorice root is amazing because it's very soothing in the stomach and it's very soothing in the esophagus if you do get reflux now there's ton now there's tons of ways that you can consume it now digio plus is licorice root extract but this one specifically has l-glycine which can be very helpful for people with stomach issues as well or just your overall digestion this one i got from whole foods and they're chewable tablets they're actually pretty big but i really seem to notice a big help especially in my esophagus and my reflux you take two of these before your meals and it really just helps soothe everything that's going on in the esophagus what licorice really helps with though is bringing down the inflammation in the mucous membrane now if you don't know a big part of our gut is very mucousy and what's really amazing especially when you make licorice root in tea form it has a lot of mucilage and mucilage is kind of like this gooey texture that kind of coats the esophagus and coats the stomach and kind of moves everything a little bit more smoother. Okay, I think I've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Some of like honorable mentions that I would say that I ate a lot, especially when my gastritis was very, very bad. is somewhat of a bland diet, which incorporated oatmeal and bananas and rice and toast. If I was going to eat some type of meat or protein, I would have some type of lean meat like ground turkey or chicken breast. If you'd like to learn more about the bland diet, here is a whole video. I pretty much explain what it is and I also give you some meal ideas that you can incorporate in your diet. Now, when it comes to bl the bland diet or when it comes to a diet overall and creating a lifestyle change, you want to do it little by little, especially when it comes to incorporating things like this. I personally am like the type of person where I know it works if I start slowly adding these foods or these herbs little by little into my life or else I get really overwhelmed. So you can go check that out if you would like. Also there is a free guide down below. I'm always sharing it on these videos. It is all about reducing and relieving your stomach lining, your inflammated stomach lining. Now, I have that down below. It's completely free. You just have to fill out the form where you put your email so I can send it to you and that's pretty much it. Make sure to follow us on our TikTok and our Instagram. I'm posting there very, very frequently, more frequently than YouTube to be quite honest. YouTube is about one time a week 
Instagram and TikTok I, every other day or so I try to post something. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I will try my best to help you out and I will see you on my next one. Bye.